Hi, I'm Allison Cote. And I'm Claire McLeod. And in this sidecast, we're going to tell you about how the gene expression of an individual mesenchymal stem cell cannot predict that cell's capacity to differentiate. This work was recently published in Nature Communications. Mesenchymal stem cells are a type of progenitor cell with the capacity to differentiate into cartilage, bone, and fat in vitro. Many researchers try to differentiate mesenchymal stem cells and make them create cartilage and culture to produce cartilage replacements for people with damaged joints. The extracellular matrix of cartilage is crucial to its function. The matrix is made up of proteins such as agrocane and glycosaminoglycans, or GAGs. As you can see from this graph, mesenchymal stem cells never produce cartilage-like matrix as well as native chondrocytes, even in the best differentiation conditions. One problem that contributes to this is that mesenchymal stem cells are generally isolated from the bone marrow as a very heterogeneous population of cells. Certain mesenchymal stem cells are quite good at producing the extracellular matrix that makes up cartilage, while others are not. Our goal was to see if we could use the gene expression in mesenchymal stem cells shortly after they have been isolated to select the population of mesenchymal stem cells that are going to be good at producing cartilage before we go through the trouble of differentiating all of them. Often, measurements of successful differentiation are done in bulk by essentially grinding up a large population of cells and assessing their matrix deposition and gene expression. However, as we've shown you, mesenchymal stem cells vary a great deal within a population, so it's necessary to employ single-cell measurements of gene expression and matrix deposition to assess this heterogeneity. In this study, we used single-molecule RNA fish to assess the mRNA expression of several genes, including agrocane, shown on the left, which is a protein that forms the backbone of the glycosaminoglycan extracellular matrix components we discussed earlier. We use agrocane as a cartilage marker. We also use osteopontin, a lineage marker for bone cells, lipoprotein lipase, a lineage marker for fat cells, and GAP-TH as a standard housekeeping gene. We also use Alshin Blue, a stain for sulfated glycosaminoglycans, and immunofluorescence measurements of the agrocam protein to assess matrix deposition as a measure of the functional performance of each individual mesenchymal stem cell. We measure gene and protein expression of mesenchymal stem cells and chondrocytes in several different situations. First, we took mesenchymal stem cells from bovine bone marrow and encapsulated them in 3D agarose gels, taking measurements over time in differentiation media. For chondrocytes, we seeded cells in the 3D gels both initially after isolation from bovine cartilage and after expansion to passage 5 in monolayer. This allowed us to look at both differentiating chondrocytes and chondrocytes that had been de-differentiated by monolayer culture. Similarly to the heterogeneity we observe in matrix deposition, gene expression of agrican and mesenchymal stem cells is also widely variable. As expected, mesenchymal stem cells have lower agrican expression than chondrocytes initially after isolation, but upon seeding the mesenchymal stem cells into a 3D agarose gel, agrican expression rapidly increases to approximately equal the agrican expression in freshly isolated chondrocytes. However, even in chondrocytes and differentiated mesenchymal stem cells, the agrocan expression within a population of cells varied up to three orders of magnitude. Because mesenchymal stem cells have the capacity to differentiate into several different lineages, we thought that this heterogeneity in agrocan expression may be linked to mesenchymal stem cells that have started to differentiate into other potential fates. To test this, we looked in single cells at the expression of genes from cartilage, bone, and fat simultaneously. We found that cells that were low in agrican were not necessarily high in the markers of other lineages. This suggests that the low agrican mesenchymal stem cells have not necessarily started to differentiate towards alternate fates. Even though we weren't sure what causes this substantial heterogeneity in agrican expression, we thought it might still be possible to use agrican expression to predict which mesenchymal stem cells would deposit large amounts of the matrix and therefore be good cartilage makers. To assess this, we compared the expression of agrican mRNA in a single cell with the deposition of the agrican protein of that same cell, as detected by immunofluorescence. We can use this receiver-operator characteristic curve to see if, based on the agrican mRNA level or the level of any other gene we measured, we can predict the amount of agrican protein that was deposited. If any of our metrics were good predictors, the curve should reach the top left corner of this graph. But as you can see, it is not anywhere near there, even if we test all possible combinations of different genes that we've measured. There are no combinations that are accurately able to predict protein deposition. We can use the best possible predictors to do an artificial sort of the mesenchymal stem cells based on gene expression levels. 
we find that there's only a slight enrichment of cells that perform well in this artificially sorted population, and we actually end up losing a lot of the high-performing cells due to misclassification. Even though none of the genes we measured at the single cell level were good predictors, we thought it might be possible to generate a set of good predictors of mesenchymal stem cells using transcriptomics. We did RNA sequencing on several clones of cells and compared their sequencing results to how much matrix they deposited after differentiation. However, even with access to the entire transcriptome, there was no combination of markers that we could find to predict mesenchymal stem cell function well. Because agrican expression is so variable in mesenchymal stem cells, we also wanted to test if expression levels were heritable from cell to cell. To assess this, we did time-lapse microscopy on live mesenchymal stem cells to track their cell divisions, then fixed and did our normal single-molecule RNA fish stain. We found that sister cells may have similar agrican levels shortly after division, but over the course of a few hours, the amount of agrican in sister cells starts to become uncorrelated, which suggests that even if you were to sort out a population of cells with high agrican expression, over the course of a few hours, that population would devolve to look just like the pre-sorted population. We can also see that even in chondrocytes, the cells native to cartilage, aggregate expression is decoupled from the amount of matrix that is deposited. Chondrocytes are thought to de-differentiate over time in monolayer culture, and once they've been in monolayer for several passages, we observe that they are no longer able to deposit the same amount of aggregin as freshly isolated chondrocytes. However, if we look at the aggregate mRNA levels in the freshly isolated and monolayer expanded chondrocytes, P0 and P5 respectively, they are actually quite similar. This suggests that even in native cells, there can be some decoupling of aggregate expression in aggregate deposition. Together, our work suggests that the gene expression profiling of both mesenchymal stem cells and chondrocytes cannot be used to predict their ability to deposit extracellular matrix. Importantly, it also suggests that the techniques used to simply increase the amount of mRNA of a particular marker, like agrican, may not be enough to force mesenchymal stem cells to appropriately deposit extracellular matrix. These findings challenge the traditional notion that marker gene expression defines or is even strongly associated with the chondrocyte phenotype, and identify new directions in progenitor cell biology to establish, enforce, and select subpopulations for therapeutic application. We would like to thank all members of the Raj and Mock Labs in addition to our funding sources, and thank you for listening to this slidecast.